Please stand as you're able for the gospel reading from Luke. Jesus entered Jericho and was passing through. A man was there by the name of Zacchaeus, and he was a chief tax collector and was wealthy. He wanted to see who Jesus was, but because he was short, he could not see over the crowd. So he ran ahead and climbed a sycamore tree to see him, since Jesus was coming that way. When Jesus reached the spot, he looked up and said to him, Zacchaeus, come down immediately. I must stay at your house today. So he came down at once and welcomed him gladly. All the people saw this and began to mutter, he has gone to be the guest of a sinner. But Zacchaeus stood up and said to the Lord, look, Lord, here and now I give half of my possessions to the poor. And if I have cheated anybody out of anything, I will pay back four times the amount. Jesus said to him, Today salvation has come to this house, because this man, too, is a son of Abraham. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Amen. What a great day it's been to be in the house of the Lord. The music all morning has been absolutely fabulous. Thank you. Amen. It's been beautiful. Thank you, Carrie, Lara, and all the choir, and, uh, and uh, Donna. I think she, she sang at the first service. Beautiful, beautiful place to be, to re be reminded that we are laying the foundation of those that come after us as we recall those, as we lifted up their names, those that have... Uh, those that have built this church in many ways and uh, have uh, laid the foundation for us to be here. What a glorious time it is to think back and remember, remember those old saints of God that now we are those old saints of God that, that, we, uh, that we're, we're, we're the ones lighting the way and we need, to, we need to be reminded of that. Zacchaeus was always one of my favorite Bible characters growing up. I used to love to sing the... Uh, that little Zacchaeus was a wee little man, a wee little man was he. He, uh, let's see, how was it? He climbed up in a sycamore tree for the Lord he wanted to see. Shame I can't sing that, uh, but I can't. Um, but anyway, he climbed up in that tree. The older I get, the more I realize that Zacchaeus passed by my tree one day. And he said, Rick, come down, because I was looking, I was seeking, I was wanting. And he comes and finds me, and comes and points straight at me, and calls me by name. And says, Rick, come down out of that tree. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go to your house today. I want to sup with you. What a glorious experience it is when we see Jesus for the very first time. Isn't it amazing how that we can be right in front of something, sometimes for years, and never see it? There's a difference in vision and being able to see something with your heart. They're just the very essence of our faith is knowing Jesus, not just knowing about Jesus, but knowing Jesus from the intent of our hearts. God gives us the gift of faith that we might know Jesus in a very intimate way. It's not an intellectual experience at all. It's a move of the heart toward the grace of God. I can remember the first time I saw Jesus as he beckoned me to come and to love him. And, and, and I recognized the amazing thing. He wanted to come to my world, to where I lived, walk in my shoes and live out my life for me, to walk in my shoes, to commune with me. That's an amazing thing that the God of the universe would care enough about little old me to come and want to spend time and commune with me. All that knowledge comes as a very divine gift of God. Zacchaeus had a handicap. He was wanting to see Jesus one day and he was small in stature, the Bible says, and because there was a crowd, he wanted to go and find Jesus. Can a man search and find God? Even when Jesus walked among us in the flesh, it was still a divine revelation to see Jesus. It still took, even when he was standing right in front of us, it still took a divine call of God. As I recalled, the, the, the uh, soldier at the cross, 
when Jesus died and he gave up the ghost, the Bible says, he said, surely that was the Son of God. That man may have been with Jesus for a long time. That man may have witnessed the whole, be, the whole brutality of the cross setting and all at once it came to this man. I think that's the way he comes to us to this day. There's, some, there's, there's a scale over our eyes and at some point in our life we reach that point where Jesus is revealed and we go from seeing Jesus to seeing Jesus. And there's a big difference. Jesus has to be seen with the heart. We're in the same place as Zacchaeus was today. We're spiritually handicapped to see Jesus. Sometimes we spend years trying to find him, trying to seek out, trying to look for meaning in our lives. And when you're, when you're on that spiritual journey, it gets pretty lonely. Sometimes we feel like we're the only ones that ever faced what you're going through right now. I assure you, out of the billions of human, of human beings that have crossed this planet, you're not the only one that's faced the loneliness of seeking. Things and people get in our way of seeing Jesus. So Zacchaeus needed to get a different place. He needed a different vantage point. He needed to find a place, and in this case, he needed a tree. I believe we all have trees to get in to find that vantage point that we need to see what's going on in our lives. Sometimes we find ourselves in the trees of guilt or grief or death or unforgiveness and a thousand other human experiences. These things are between us and who Jesus is. So many had reasons to hate Zacchaeus as a tax collector. Sometimes I think, as I've learned as a pastor, I see too much of the underbelly of the human experience. Matter of fact, I live in the underbelly of the human experience. And I face all of the same kinds of temptations that every other person face, faces. The lust of the flesh that every other person faces. When humans uh, often fall prey, we, we humans often fall prey to passions and, and, and of the flesh and selfishness and pride and arrogance and all of those things that go with being human. Our pride causes us to want to label people like Zacchaeus, who's a little different, or he's, he's ungodly in some way. We, we love to give people a label so we can put them in the proper cubbyhole that we prepare for them. All of this or that kind of person was once bad. All of these people were bad, so now much that all of them must be bad. And then there's those nice people who understand how easy it is to think that we can understand. Church, you, you really don't understand as much as you think you do. We don't have a, a clue about the pain that somebody else is suffering. We explain, explain things away with or make a lot of people struggles. It's no, it's no help to say your situation is not all that bad. When we take our eyes off of Jesus, we're drawn, we're drawn away into elevating humans to pedestal status. No person should do that. We should never elevate somebody to that kind of status. We're often let down when we hear our spiritual heroes have fallen in some way. As we look around our country to this very day, politicians and preachers and other church leaders have been involved in, in things that are not compatible with biblical teaching. In many cases, the things they're saying contradicts their very actions. Even someone as beloved as uh, Charles Stanley I read about just a while back. He went through a divorce a few years ago. He remains the pastor of a very large church in Atlanta. And after proclaiming since 1993 that if he had to divorce his wife, he would, he would resign as pastor. I think we all fall short of our ideal selves. Or in Paul's words, we have all sinned and fallen short of God's glory. We have not lived up to all that God has, has and the potential that we could have had. Every human being is fallible and subject to fall prey to the human frailties of the flesh, the lust of the flesh and pride. Zacchaeus had fallen short. He had to get a glimpse of Jesus. He had to go find out what this man is about. What's this Jesus is about? We're supposed to be witnesses of all that Jesus is doing and has done in our lives. That's what me and you are called to do. People are supposed to be witnesses. 
And God uses the church to bring people to the knowledge of Jesus. Now, we help people to trying to help people all the time, and that's all good. All, but all too often we forget that the real witness, the real work of the church is to simply witness the Christ to a hurting world. I support, and we should be involved in acts of mercy and compassion in our community. But those acts, they, those acts of compassion, they merely act as a platform so that we can witness to the power of Jesus Christ in others' lives, that we may witness to what God is doing in our lives, that they may know that Jesus is Lord. So those acts of mercy and compassion are merely a platform with which to stand. We tend to want to analyze a person's life and then to proceed to tell them and give them what, tell them what they ought to do, give them, give them advice. And, and with good intentions, we mostly get it wrong most of the time. One of the TED Talks, some of you remember TED Talks, or it's a PBS guy, and he comes on and he gives some great information. He caught, talked about this young group of econ, uh, economists from America, and they're, they're going to go to Africa, and they're going to have some ideas on how to help this continent and help these people. So they go there, and they have some great ideas, and they found some very fertile soil, and they're, we're going to teach these people how to grow cash crops, and we're going to show them how to do it. We're going to show them how to, how to farm. And so they plowed up this beautiful land, and, and, and they plowed and planted in this fertile soil, and the tomatoes just flourished. And it was going to be an absolutely a great bumper crop. The land was so fertile. And just before the tomatoes were going to be harvested, a herd of hippos came out and took the field out. All of the natives, they knew all along what was going to happen. All too often, you think you know what other people need, but in fact, you rarely do. It's always a movement of the Spirit that lets us simply walk beside somebody. See, that's what Jesus does for us. He, just, he doesn't come to condemn us. He comes to love us right where we are, right in the midst of our sin and right in the midst of our degradation. Jesus comes and just spreads his arms and says, I love you right where you are, Rick. And because he's walking beside me, now, now my eyes, the scales come off my eyes and I begin to see. And I begin to see those things which are hurtful and harmful. I begin to, to grow in Christ as he walks beside me. Not, not condemning me, but simply convicting me along the way and showing me the way of how to live my life. That's what we're supposed to do with other folks. You can't tell somebody else how to live their lives. All you parents, how'd that work out for you? Telling your kids how to live their lives. Just let me know. You can tell me after a while. How'd that work out for you? Well, I'm telling you, it doesn't work out. It's no different for a one Christian trying to walk beside somebody that's hurting and tell them what's wrong with them. You don't know what's wrong with them. The spiritual, it's a spiritual thing. It's a movement of the mind of God in a person's life. We're called to simply walk beside them and share and witness what God is doing in our lives. And that's what transforms their life. God will do the same thing to them. How many knows you grow up every now and then, don't you? How many knows you, grow, you stumble along in darkness and blindness and scales over your eyes and doing really stupid stuff? Right? I've got, have I hit everybody real good? We, we stumble along and all at once the scales come off. And it didn't happen because of condemnation. It happened because of the convicting power of the Spirit of God begin to move in your heart and your life. And you begin, somebody starts walking beside you. And that man's name is Jesus. And as he walks beside you, things are revealed. And you know all that stuff that you struggled with before? You don't have to struggle anymore. Because I, I know that my God can fix that which is wrong in my life. I can't, God can, let him. And that's, what, that's, that's how we should uh, see ourselves as walking beside somebody. One man was determined he was going to see Jesus. He needed to know who he was. So Zacchaeus, with all these people, he finds his way to a tree. 
If everyone is bu busy describing Jesus to us, how can we come to find him for ourselves? Nobody can follow Jesus for you. It's a, it's a matter of your heart being awakened and, and being awakened by the Spirit of God. If we're always listening to this expert or that ex expert about the latest book, do we really take time to commune with God? So Zacchaeus climbed a tree in the hopes that he might get a glimpse. He might see Jesus for himself. And remember, Zacchaeus was trying to see who Jesus was and was unable to because of the crowd. And Jesus comes along and looks up. See, Jesus come to your tree one day. He stopped right under your tree, whatever tree you were in. And he looks up and he calls you by name. And he said to me, Rick, come down out of that tree. I'm going to your house today. I'm going to dwell with you. I'm going to commune with you. I'm going to sup with you. It's Jesus who finds the searcher. So this day, All Saints Day, was celebrated actually Tuesday of last week. Remember, for every single saint of God that's ever around the throne of God, one at a time, Jesus stopped at their tree and said, Come down. I want to sup with you. It's good to seek God. But remember, God is ultimately the seeker. He longs for a relationship with you. He wants to come to your house. He wants to live with you. In Second Chronicles, it talks about God roaming the whole earth to see whose heart is blameless toward him. Jesus called Zacchaeus by name. He came to where Zacchaeus was, and he stopped. To remain anonymous at that point was not an option for Zacchaeus. The gospel finds us where we are and digs us out one by one. Come speaking just to me as if there's never another human on the planet. Jesus comes and speaks just to you. Conviction is always focused on the individual. Can't tell you how many times people come and say, Preacher, you're preaching right at me. And the odd thing I always found was I'll have this sermon all prepared. I think I'm saying this and, and you guys hear something completely different. Because it's the Spirit, the way the Spirit interacts with your, with, with, with your Spirit. It, it, it happens. I can say one thing and you can hear something else. I've patted myself more, uh, more than once on the back thinking what a good message that was. And I go out and somebody said, Preacher, it was the best sermon on another subject that I had, didn't even mention. It happens all the time. The Spirit relates to your Spirit. So when we come here, and we hear the Word of God. We're convicted and moved by the power of the Holy Spirit. Remember, we're convicted, not condemned. Huge difference between condemnation and conviction. Condemnation separates us from God. Conviction draws us toward God. Conviction is always redemptive. Conviction is merely God speaking to your heart and, 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 and trying to, to move you in a way that's more healthy, to move you away of toxic situations in your life. We're made miserable for a purpose because God loves us. God does not make light of our situation. When God convicts us, we repent, and that repentance brings forgiveness and healing. Condemnation is not from Jesus it only brings despair and frustration. While we're saved one at a time, we, God does not isolate us. God plants us into a body of believers that we can come here and, and elevate each other and hold one another up. All Saints Day reminds us of the corporate connection with all the saints of God, both present, past, and future. All Saints Day reminds us that we're not alone. Zacchaeus was not touched by the saving grace of Christ and then turned out on his own devices. Jesus said, I'm coming to your house. I'm coming with you. That morning, Zacchaeus set out to see who Jesus was, and before the day was over, he's sitting at a table over a cup of coffee. What a blessing. What an honor. Maybe it's not quite that simple, but it's just the same. It's just the same true. Jesus wants to be your daily companion. Just what does the story of Zacchaeus the tax collector and All Saints Day have in common? Hebrews 12 talks about a great cloud of witnesses where they've cast aside everything that they might run, run the race that's set before them. 
Seeing who Jesus is. Knowing who Jesus is. Fixing our eyes on who Jesus is. Taking him home with us. It's what this great cloud of witnesses is vitally concerned about for us today. The miracle is faith itself. Jesus still comes to where we are. He stops at our tree. Come down. I'm coming home with you today. That's in reality has happened to every born-again Christian that's ever turned to Jesus as their Lord. I remember when Jesus came walking under my tree. But you know what I heard? I heard, come unto me, if your burden is heavy, I'll give you rest. That's what I heard. I said, Rick, your burden is heavy. Come, I'll lighten your load. Jesus reveals himself not simply for our, for our personal salvation, but we simply fall in line behind a great body of believers, a great cloud of witnesses. Is Jesus calling you to come down this morning? Is Jesus calling you out of your tree, whatever tree you find yourself in? You may find yourself in trouble in, in, in many, many different kinds of ways. But see, Jesus comes and he stops and he looks straight at you, calls you by name and says, come down. I want to sup with you. I want to dine with you. I want to commune with you. Before I close, let's, uh, let's bow our heads just for a moment of prayer. Thank you, Jesus, for the power of your spirit. Thank you, God, that you know us by name. You call us by name. You know the intent of our hearts. You know our struggles. Father, I pray for that person here that's standing at a vantage point of some kind of tree, a tree of hurt, a tree of pain, and they see you in all your glory. I pray they respond. Open up their heart and their home that you may sup with them. In Jesus' name, amen.